Yahoy mateys, this be my Sea of Thieves lantern and I built it in just four hours. You don't believe me? Come aboard for a spell and I'll show ye how. Yahoy, fellow maker. <clears throat> I mean, hello there, fellow maker. Welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill and I'm gonna show you how I built this lantern the day before I flew out for Dragon Con. We tend to keep a pretty well stocked shop around here, so I was able to build this with everything I had on hand, with the exception of the LEDs. I did order those a few days ahead of time. I started by mocking up a template for the sides of the lantern out of construction paper and tracing those out on my 10 millimeter foam. I cut the sides of these pieces at a 45 degree angle over on the bandsaw so that the lantern would have nice clean corners. The inside windows on each side were cut out by hand with a very sharp knife. I tried to make sure those corners were cut nice and clean to avoid having to do any cleanup later, but nothing is ever perfect, so I did a wee bit of tidying up with the rotary tool. For the glass in the windows, I used a 1 8 inch thick acrylic plastic. I cut them to shape just a little bit bigger than those foam frames, and I also broke another bandsaw blade. After putting out a clean pair of underwear, I finished cutting out the windows on my other, more well-behaved bandsaw. These windows were glued down to the foam frames using super glue and a spray accelerant. To diffuse the light going through these windows, I airbrushed several layers of paint onto the back of them. The first layer was to darken the edges of the windows, and the second layer was to make the glass more opaque, creating a softer light effect from those LEDs. To attach all four of the window panes, I slathered those 45 degree cut edges with contact cement, let it dry for five minutes, and then carefully pressed those pieces together. Most of the rest of the parts were made from layers of foam that were sandwiched together. You can buy EVA foam in thicker sheets, but I didn't have any on hand, so I did all of my parts with that 10 millimeter thick foam, sometimes sandwiching as many as three layers together. These parts needed to house some electronics, so I used my sharp knife to hollow out room for the LEDs, my Arduino, and batteries. Any rough exterior edges were cleaned up on the belt sander. To access the batteries, I made the entire bottom section removable. I drilled shallow holes in the foam to make room for several magnets on both the bottom and the base of my lantern. Pairs of magnets were super glued into each side, providing an incredibly secure but removable panel. Some of the parts required a nice big bevel, so I cut those by hand using a metal ruler and my really sharp hobby knife. Interior cuts, like this one for the LED tower, can also be made on the scroll saw. After poking a hole through the foam, I fed the scroll saw blade through the hole and then I cut along the line. While I'm cutting that out, I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons. It's because of you that we've been able to tackle so many really cool projects in our fantastic new shop. If you aren't already a patron, but you want to help us out, you can head on over to patreon.com slash punish props, get access to a weekly behind the scenes vlog from the shop, extra credit build discussion videos, and early access to our weekly build videos. Thank you so much for the continued support. It means the world to us. Okay, let's get back to the build. I wanted to make sure the handle was super sturdy, so I started by shaping a bit of reinforcement out of quarter inch thick aluminum armature wire. I outlined this wire onto some foam and then I designed the handle around it. These pieces were rough cut by hand and then I used my rotary tool to carve out a trench for the wire to fit snugly between the two foam sides. Those sides were then glued up with contact cement, allowed to dry, and then sandwiched together over the wire. The rough shaping of the handle was done over on the belt sander and the spindle sander. But you could do the same thing with a rotary tool. Before attaching the handle to the top of the lantern, I needed to build the top of the lantern. It has a very shallow bevel, so I cut it roughly to form with a sharp knife before cleaning it up on the belt sander. Then I cut a hole in that top piece to accept another foam piece that would serve as the base for my handle. I poked a hole through that part to accept the two protruding ends of my armature wire in the handle. Then I used a combination of contact cement and hot glue to attach the handle to the top of the lantern and then I glued that part into the rest of the top section. Finally, it was time to tackle the lights. I cut my NeoPixel strips into 10 LED segments. The LED segments were wired to a 4.5 volt battery pack and an Arduino. The code for this project was something my friend Lon put together. I'll have a link down below, but it's a NeoPixel flickering light code that's super simple to adjust for your needs. I just set the active pin, in this case I used 
six arbitrarily, and I change the number of light segments and the length of those segments to five sets of two lights, totaling the 10 I have in each strip. I had six strips in total and those were hot glued around a tube I made out of more of that 10 millimeter EVA foam. I know this wiring looks kind of like a rat's nest, but it's quite simple. I ran all six light strips in parallel so that their leads were all just soldered together. Then power and ground went to the board and batteries and the one data wire went to pin six on my Arduino. I double checked that everything still worked. Yes! <laughs> yes! You made fire! before stuffing all of the wires down through the hollow center of my foam tube. My light tube was then hot glued into the base of my lantern. Then the assembled window panes were glued down to that base with more contact cement. Before closing up the lantern, I crumpled up some parchment paper and stuffed that into the lantern between the LEDs and the window panes. This provided an extra bit of diffusion, making those bright LED spots much less pronounced. Finally, I glued the top on the lantern, pinning that light tube between the top and bottom of my assembly. If I had any on hand, I probably would have used a smaller Arduino like a trinket, but all I had to work with was an Arduino Uno board. So that got tacked into the bottom of the lantern with just a little bit of hot glue. After that, I soldered pins on the ends of my power and data cables. Again, this made everything on the board easily removable. I plugged in my new pins and lo and behold, the lantern still works. The last step was painting and after a quick heat seal with my blowtorch, I went straight to my acrylic paints. I had maybe half an hour to finish painting this, so I didn't waste any time with sealing. I grabbed my bronze paint and a chip brush and just went kind of bonkers. I didn't want total coverage here, just a little bit of black peeking through adds a nice bit of texture. Then I pulled out my airbrush and with a little bit of dark brown paint, I added some shadows wherever it made sense. The final touch was a bit of copper rub and buff applied with my finger to all of the exposed edges. This last little bit of highlight work looked pretty great. I finished up my rub and buff and my lantern was complete. Now I know this is just a silly prop that I made in like half a day, but I'm still crazy excited with how it turned out. It really goes to show that if you keep a well-stocked shop and have all of the appropriate tools ready to go, you can accomplish something pretty fantastic in an extremely limited amount of time. Hey, thank you so much for hanging out with me in the shop today. As always, the tools and materials that I used for this build are linked down in the description. And as always, if you have questions about this build, please leave them down in the comments and I will do my best to get back to you. And again, a huge thanks goes out to our patrons for making this shop space and these projects possible. If you'd like to check out the extra credit video for this build, then you can head on over to patreon.com slash punished props and consider tossing us a dollar. Oh, and if you're into this foam fabrication type stuff, you can go over to foamsmith.com that'll send you to our books Foamsmith 1 and 2, all about making props and costumes from this fantastic material. Okay, matey, that's all I've got for you today. I'll see you in the next build. Yeah!